Well, there's an observation on this end, and there's one on this end. Um, I've got mixed comments from you folks on the last video, um, and talking with other people, I actually don't know what's going to happen. I haven't tried it yet. Um, I let the AI run the Daily Passenger from Silva uh, down here to Bryson. We've been playing for a little bit today. Um, but uh, on the way back, when the train's full, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna try and see what we can see, and do what we can do. <clears throat> so road reverse. Goodbye. Go go do that thing. Go to Ella. Go be a passenger train. Um, and we'll, we'll stop it outside of Ella, and then uh, and we're gonna try and see does the double obs trick work. I hope it works. <laughs> it would be neat. Making money is good. We like it. Mr. Krabs, I like, I like money. Yeah, see? But um, I do have to say as well, yes, the train is still yellow, but it's less obnoxiously disgusting yellow. It's now Aspen Gold. Uh, special huge shout out to Mainline Through the Rockies, the man, the myth, the legend. Um, <laughs> because he has a hex code for uh, Aspen Gold that he likes, which is the Rio Grande Yellow, and apparently it is FDA C07, or C07. And, uh, that looks, I mean, it looks like Aspen Gold to me. It, it's what, uh, the, the units were painted, it's what the passenger cars were painted, depending on, uh, year and time and place and things, but... It's quite pretty, so huge thanks to Mainline. So we're gonna let that that guy go do that. Um, over by Koei. Thank you. I don't remember who commented that. Um, who's a a region, uh, a regional person uh, that's actually around the the real place um, back east in Tennessee, I believe it is, um, where these towns really exist. Uh, it's not Cowie. It's apparently Koei. And then uh, it's apparently also not Nantahala, it's Nan Nantahala, I think. I'm probably remembering that wrong. But anyway, here at uh, Dillsboro, got our, our choo-choos in the shop. Uh, they've done their work for the day. The, um, I don't know how long this guy's been stopped. He's been stopped for a while, apparently. Uh, doing our last pickup here as a uh, <laughs> the, the eastbound. So we're... Gonna get that um, finished up here. Oh, ESD number two. Hang on, we're about to run something through the back of the roundhouse. It's fine. Yeah, the not Sumter Valley 19. <laughs> Lots of fun comments uh, in in there uh, related to me being a dum dum. What else is new? But yeah, you can see everything's kind of spotted. We switched out the paperboard, um, and we're unloading cordwood. We're gonna have to do that. We're gonna skip time and, and run the the empties back when time comes. Um, but we still have still have more work to do on this day. Um, so yeah, and then uh, God yeah the then the westbound was the Pacific, our new engine. We'll be taking a look at that uh, in just a just a minute. Um, it's over at Bryson already, so we're uh, that'll be the next thing we go deal with. Um, and, and I I wanna. I want to look at the Pacific, because um, I, I started looking at it, um, and this has no bearing on your enjoyment of the game, this has no bearing on the, the way the game plays, or if it's a good game or not, but there's some things on that engine that, as an educator of Steam, I feel I need to point them out so that you guys can learn, and, and I'm not, not trying to talk smack about Railroader, I'm not trying to talk smack about whoever 3D modeled it, like... Um, 3D modeling a locomotive, I can only imagine how hard it is. I mean, I, I, I'm i doing it in SolidWorks, right, for the, the Montezuma, which is a cute little itty-bitty little choo-choo, right? Um, and I struggle with it um, and drawings and the accuracy and all that stuff, um, but Blender or 3ds Max or Maya, any of the those type of 3D programs, um, they're really hard. They're, they're very different. They don't work with my brain. Uh, I can't 3D model for the sake of a game like that, that that's just not how my brain functions it's very much an artist kind of mindset and uh, that does not work with my brain so but that's why uh, that's why there's wonderful humans out there that make the models of the choo-choo's instead 
so I'm not trying to uh, not trying to talk smack or anything, um, but I, I feel like I need to point out some of the things on the model, just because they're just totally wrong um, in terms of physical mechanics of locomotive. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll talk about you in just a second, but we'll we'll, we'll keep it. Um, we're gonna keep it busy because it's got some stuff for Appalachia, and it, oh, it's got something for the team track. There's a passenger train in the way, so <laughs> we didn't do it. Anyway, I guess we'll go uh, put that in the team track and then run it over to Appalachian Hardwoods, um, and then. Yeah, then then we'll start talking about the pipes. Because <laughs> what's what's the problem? What am I complaining about? Um, it's it's mostly the the piping on the locomotive. Um, and there's not great reference for a lot of locomotives out there. There's not great drawings um, for a lot of that stuff. Um, and it's not simple stuff. So I mean, the the model it looks okay when you look at it, but. Um, you know, even from this distance, it looks fine. Uh, it looks like it looks like an engine. It's got all sorts of cool stuff on it, right? Like it's got this feed water heater, and it's got a mess of pipes that are associated with it. But the uh, the the function, when you start tracing them out and looking and realizing where the things run, it's like, oh my god, no, this is bad. This doesn't make sense. Which you know, again, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter for the game. And I'm not trying to smack talk railroader. I've been enjoying the hell out of it. Um, Particularly now with five trains. Oh my god. Uh, I feel like I don't have enough me to manage it now with five trains sometimes. It's like there's always something that one of the other trains needs. Um, and then sometimes everyone's running over the road and it's kind of boring. But it's like, oh, hang on. That's kind of weird. Uh, but I, I think that the game has gotten a lot more interesting. So maybe I'll have to, uh, you know, bribe Khan to come film a video with me. I miss you, Khan. Where are you? Or, uh, or have somebody else come run on the ES and DT. So, yeah, because yeah, because uh, I need I need engineers, man. We're gonna we're gonna be buying more engines and more things. Um, you know, God, we have we have it quite the debt to pay. Um, <laughs> which I guess we could pay some of it, get rid of some of the debt there. Okay, sixty four thousand dollars. That's fine. <laughs> we'll work on the rest. Um, but yeah. Um, theoretically, we're going to just be making more money, right? So, <clears throat> all right, get out, get out of your own way. I will say that the Pacific big drivers, um, I do notice that it, it accelerates horrendously slow compared to a lot of the other engines. Um, but I mean, that's, that's, that's the way it be like big drivers. That, that's how they be like yes the the wheel when the wheels turn they they turn less and you go further but getting them moving at the same time is uh is a challenging thing so all right are you spotted yes you're spotted at the team track all right and then we will normal our switch oh my god 82 bucks that's pretty good uh, it seems like the distance you take cars sets some of the pricing for them like these cars, and, and you can even look if you look at uh, equipment operations. Yeah, 82 bucks on delivery on this one, um, on this way bill. It, it scales based on where you have to go. So stuff that goes to Bryson is worth more money than stuff that goes to Silva or the paperboard. Although the paperboard is, um, you know, kind of big money in, in that it's a big industry and everything. Um, but I, I do need to actually, I do need to look into our locations and um, shout out to my good friend Casey um, who is a tester on the railroader team um, she recommended that I try and get higher tiers for the stuff at Bryson and then I would be able to get more stuff going but uh, they're all tier one and, and I don't have any other tiers available single tier somebody lime me single tier like like i had a single tier that went down my face that i was sad that i could not upgrade from my single tier dot png <laughs> didn't do that intentionally that was just me being a ding dong anyway r1 which track is that okay of course it's that one um so 
Yeah, lined in. You can line the engine here, and we'll Dutch drop into the uh, the other track. I'm gonna release the air um, so that it's ready for it. Or not the air, the handbrake. <laughs> that one, um, so that we can, you know, nail that car and move it out the way. All right, bye, bye, box car. This thing does scoot, that's for sure. All right. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> it was just leaned over. What? What is it doing? It's drunk. Oh my God. Bang. Oh well, well, well. That's um. That's gone poorly. <laughs> and then our Pacific is stuck. Uh, roll partially rolled over. Um, I heard someone talking smack. Oh my God, the quake. <laughs> let me uh, let me just rerail this real quick. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Nothing happened. This is already railed. Oh my God. <laughs> it's quake. Literally, it's fine. All right. If we release the air, no. Why is why is it just? Like I'm, why why are you why are you like this? Do 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 do. Like what what are you doing? Choo choo. Uh yeah, you went around a a a, a switch kind of quick, but man, yeah, this is somebody needs to get the specific of the shop and look at the suspension. Heist touched it, so it's broken. It's become brown. <clears throat> like these cars it's fine we needed to decrease our safety rating anyways so uh let's see railroad yeah 60 it's gone up again it's at 62 percent which is not not good we don't we don't like this we're the es and dt one of you commenters said that you got your safety rating down to nine percent and i just need to get on that level like we need to overachieve like that like we just we, we can't be outdone we're the es and dt uh to prove my point we're gonna spot this box car by punting it violently, full throttle, bang, bang. Looks great. Call it a day. Oh god. <laughs> Ping pong. Minus twenty six dollars damage. It's fine. Uh, and apparently that's all. Oh no, that's in the dirt. Oh, and so is my tender. Yeah, yeah. We should probably we should probably fix that. Oh my word. Uh, one. That's the one. That's the thing that gets your character rerailed. Um, that's our, that guy didn't derail. That's rerailed. Okay, cool. Is it, oh yeah, our number one, of course, is done. And number four, okay, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna keep the trains moving and then I will rant about pipes. I know I promised it minutes ago already, but, uh, we, but we have science to do. Oh my God. Oh no. Well, I teleported my player, but not my camera. That's, um, interesting. Okay, anyway. I'm not used to playing with a player. All right, so the, the, the secret is we need to see if we get vastly more money by kicking this train to the station, right? Do we get double bonus for having two obs uh, on the train? Because I, I don't honest, I do not know. Uh, somebody told me that it works. Somebody else told me that it's been patched and it doesn't do it anymore. Um, and, and other people were like, had good comments and was like, it doesn't really matter um, whether the bonus works or not. You could actually just run around the train and r run it properly and have the bonus either direction now, which is very smart, but uh, I'm a railroader and there's a saying on the railroad that a good railroader is a lazy railroader. That's actually what they taught us in management at BNSF. And you might be thinking that um, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Don't they want you to work hard? Well, yes, but actually, no. Um, they found that most injuries on the railroad are caused by walking path of travel hazards. So, uh, oh god, here comes the BNSF management shtick. Um, <laughs> most of the the uh, the injuries were based on walking and walking on ballast, um, either a stress injury that happens over time, or or somebody tripping or something like that, right? Um, and so they actually encourage you and they say, be a lazy railroader, ride the step as much as you can. Ride the engine to the place. Don't walk on the ballast because you'll get hurt or you're more likely to get hurt, um, which is kind of interesting. So they actually did say like, oh yeah, 
good rare order is a lazy one. All right, well, let's see. We're gonna unload. Are we gonna get the bonus? The the double bonus, the wombo, wombo combo. $10 for eight fares? That's it? Only eight people? Okay, well. <laughs> Was that a test? Kind of. 10 bucks for eight people. I mean, that doesn't feel like there's much of a bonus. But it's a 25% bonus, right? That's that's the but but if they were a dollar a piece, then it would have been eight. And then we added Okay. I think it may have been patched. Single tier. Once again. Um <laughs> it may have been patched, which uh, which is just sad, but we'll send this on to Whittier, and then we'll deal with the number four. Um at the other end of the line here. And then we'll kind of go from there. Take the break off, because the AI doesn't know about the breaks. And then you just just go. Go go do that voodoo, that hoodoo. That voodoo? I don't remember the quote. Go do that voodoo that you do so well. It's fine. All right, uh, I'll line you back to the, the normal alignment and we'll put a few Z down. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll test it one more time. We'll put it down in advance of Whittier. Um, just in case that the like the distance wasn't much or whatever, um, so we'll, we'll try that and see if it's worth or if the if the thing happens. We'll have to be scientific about it at some point and like test the same stuff and only go to one station and blah blah blah. But anyway, <clears throat> hi interchange train. We had a lot of cars for interchange today. One, one of them's ours, and it's in the middle, uh, which hopefully won't cause a problem. Oh, this thing needs coal. <laughs> I, I had a moment I was when I was playing earlier that was frustrating with the AI, where um, you know I was I was running the whole railroad and trying to manage five trains. Um, oh, and yeah, there's a fusee, and that's very scary. Sorry, friend. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the AIs ran out of water, and he didn't say anything. Like it would be nice if. Either they were aware and then like, hey, I'm getting low, don't get screwed. Uh, because of course it was on this end of the railroad, right? And there's no there's no water in Silva, which is, logistically, if this were my railroad and I put the facilities down, the end of the railroad, why is there no water? <laughs> Come on. Um, and it's after like a huge grade too, like the Dillsborough to Silva alignment is a big grade. So what, why do you don't have water at the top of that? What the hell, you know? But again, that's that's me being picky um, and operation. I mean, it makes it challenging operationally, right? To some extent. So a um, little bit interesting. Um, it's, that's not how I would run my railroad, but um, it's uh, where we, we deal with the map that we have, right? So anyway. But yeah, if the if the AI at least knew to not to, to not hose you with uh, with the way that it uh, <laughs> um, the way that it runs out of water or fuel or whatever, that would be that'd be nice. But here we are, it's fine. They're they're working on the AI. Um, Adam's done some good stuff updating the AI, so um, I I have full confidence that he'll get it right. So and now we shift. And now we talk about this locomotive and pipes, okay? As a steam educator, um, I, I feel like I have to teach these things at, because they're not simple things. You, you look at this and you say, Hi, why are you so mean? Uh, like, this is a nice model, it looks nice. Um, and you're right, it does look nice, but you're, you're, you're looking at it like it is a locomotive. You're not looking at it as a smoke box and a cylinder saddle and wheels and pipes and uh, systems and appliances and supply and like like it's a real locomotive and, and divesting all its parts into the little bits, uh, which is how I look at these, which I, I, it took me a long time to rec like recognize a that I was seeing things this way or that I was perceiving it this way, um, because you have to kind of take all of this crap apart on a locomotive to know. Um, but I, you know, I can't have you all in the shop with me while we disassemble the 491. 
So I feel that I should teach how I can and where I can. Um, and so again, this is not me trying to talk crap about Adam or Railroader or the devs or whoever 3D modeled this. Um, I'm not trying to, to do that. I'm trying to educate uh, about real locomotives. And this is a good example of that. So let's look. We have, we have a turret up here, right? Okay, so the turret's got a separate steam pipe feeding it that is connected into the boiler, presumably. Um, I've seen engines set up and usually the turret gets its uh, its steam from somewhere in the steam dome. So presumably this pipe runs into the boiler and then continues and, and gets its takeoff there. We can't see that, but that's fine, right? Uh, so this is the turret, which is, you know, a big manifold where all your starting valves are, which are those giant extensions into the cab. I mean, they're, they're the, those are a bit oversized, but that's not, and that's neither here nor there. Um, but this is where all of the steam supply to everything comes from, basically, is the turret. This is where your appliances get their steam. And so we, we look and it's like, all right, well, the dynamo is right there. Um, and the the drain off the dynamo, I mean, that is that is not how that's piped. Um, and that, <laughs> that's, that's not what a dynamo looks like, even... even thinking of all the different brands um it's supposed to be a pile national dynamo i'm sure and that's not what they look like and they're and it's missing some details and missing oil fills and whatever right because uh, you actually have to change the oil in the dynamo fun fact and if you haven't done that as a railroad um you should probably check that if if you're involved in railroad stuff uh but the steam supply doesn't go in there where it does i mean it's like going through the foot that's that's not where it goes. Um, that's incorrect. And and then looking at this pipe, like you you would never like it, it, the more fittings you add, the more chance there is for something to leak. You would never set this up like this ever. Uh, having this the like elbow 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 whatever, which I mean the fittings aren't even modeled because I mean modeling pipe not simple. So I, I understand that, but you would never pipe this this way. Um, also, why would you set up this one? Okay, maybe historically it was like, all right, that was the, the starting valve, and then they moved something and changed something, and, and then they didn't repipe it for XYZ reason. But you would use the closest valve you can, typically, although well, sometimes sometimes trains are stupid. Uh, so maybe, maybe you wouldn't, which is fine. But then you would never you would never either have fittings or smooth bend like this like this. You would never do this. Um, you would have the, the pipe just smoothly go up and over if you had to have it go up and over or you'd have it lay flat and then you would put this other one which is running from a t off of the turret over the other side of the boiler why and and what does it do Let, let's follow it okay we start at the turret we go we have a t so some of it goes there some of it goes here um okay well why would you t what, what is this going to okay it runs there um it runs past the air compressor and it goes, okay, it goes to the part of the water pump, which is also just, look up pictures of a, of a water pump, feed water pump, but please, I beg you, because uh, <laughs> no. Okay, so we have that side that does that, and then what is what is this, the T go? Okay, we follow it, we go down, it goes down, it goes nested under that, and then it goes into, oh, the air compressor on this side. So you're, you're, shutting off the water pump and one air compressor with one valve that doesn't make any bit of sense like i could see having a a teed line like this that would feed both air compressors on both sides these big engines you know uh, have two pumps a lot of the time and that and that's totally fine and accurate but that's not how you would set that up like starting those compressors is a very specific process. You don't want to break the compressor. Uh, you need to have air on the air end to cushion it so that it doesn't ram the head through the bottom of the thing. Uh, so you would, usually you'd even have an, a separate throttle. Like if you're set up super nice, you'd have a separate throttle right by the pump, which um, we've modified on our, on 491 to do that. And then 346 as well. 20's only got the valve in the cab, but um, you would not plumb separate appliances like that. Um, the, the more silly things you do with that on a steam locomotive, the more problems you can have. Um, I've heard of a certain theme park uh, having piped the injector and the hydrostatic off of a T off the turret, kind of like that, where um, 
and then they were having all sorts of boiler problems because every time they ran the injector, it was robbing steam from the hydrostatic through the T and it was sucking the oil of the hydrostatic and putting it in the boiler. Like, okay, no wonder you're having foaming. You've made an oily boiler. Like, what the heck, you know? So the more easy routes you do this sort of thing, the, the worse it is. Um, I mean, honest to God, I would imagine that those would always have separate startup valves, shutoff valves at the turret. Um, and then the air compressors, I mean, look at a cross compound air compressor and tell me uh, it is not an oblong slot. It is, oh, it, it is cylindrical because that's how that works. Who wants to machine rings for that? No one, literally no one. Um, so, I mean, mm, well, yeah, that's that's just not what that looks like and that's not how it works. And and that's, this is not where the steam, in, like, <laughs> that's not where the steam goes in and that's fine. Uh, nor is that how this is set up. Like this thing has got the air intake right here plumbed in to, the top on the high pressure side which this is where the steam would be going in and usually the air intake has a, a big manifold that it connects to um on the compressor and and now the steam is just running down to the bottom end this is the air end this isn't the steam end the steam it goes up here the air is generated down here and the steam is connected on the wrong side and the air is connected on the wrong side that's not how an air compressor works. And then this would be the exhaust side and there's a T coming off of it. Why is there a T? What, 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 are the, what, what are these pipes doing? This one goes up and then it goes into a sanitary T um, because uh, you, you typically use those in sewage, which is why it's called a sanitary T um, rather than just a normal T. <clears throat> and that goes into something else. Well, I guess we'll look at that in a second. But then we have, th this would be the exhaust side of the steam and we've got a T off the exhaust and this would just be plumbed through the smoke box usually, but uh, we follow this one and it runs and then it comes back and then it goes, okay, let's radiator piping into the main reservoir. So th that's kind of like, oh, this is the air side of the compressor according to the way this is modeled. Um, but <laughs> it should be down there. It shouldn't be up here. Um, what it, that doesn't compute. Okay, well then where does this go? That that goes um, and it runs behind the main reservoir, and it go it goes up and over. Okay, and then it dives down, and then it goes into. I think it's the the front one, right? It's the front pipe of these two pipes. Yeah, the front pipe of these two pipes. Which also, why is there a shutoff valve there? And you would never bend this like this. That's okay, but come across uh, and then. Uh, okay, then it tees into the main reservoir on this side. Okay, so this is all main reservoir error, which makes sense, but then you have the radiator piping aft, like as a T to the main res? That's wacky. Um, and then why is there another T off the main res right there? Like, what is, what is this? What, then why is this pipe clipping through the power reverse cylinder? Like, it just keeps going. It goes through the power reverse cylinder in a way that it physically could not. And then it keeps going, where? It doesn't connect to this air pump, does it? No, it, tur it turns around, okay, no, it turns around and connects to, again, the wrong side of the air pump, <laughs> again. Um, and then, so like, okay, maybe that's the supply of the air pump, so like, okay, well, conceivably, it makes some amount of sense, but then we look and, and what would actually be the air side goes and it connects and it tees into this, which is teed off the water pump, the water pump, and then theoretically, is this a delivery? Or is this an exhaust? Okay, well, it's teed to the water pump, which is weird, but we keep going uh, and we look and it goes up through there and then and then it, then it runs into the feed water heater? What? Like, the, none of these systems are, are properly modeled. None of them are, like, this is just, we threw some pipes on it because trains have pipes. Uh, that's that's the vibe, and I, and I mean, again, I'm not I'm not trying to be mean to the modeler. I'm not trying to be mean to railroader. Um, it's just that th that's not how these systems work. And and if you look at this, uh, and you you want to treat it like it's a real locomotive, um, and and you want to learn about working on real locomotives, uh, which I hope you do if you if you're watching this channel, um, this is just entirely wrong. The sky is green right now. Like like that that's what we're looking at. Um, and it doesn't like, 
the sky is supposed to be a color and you know that because oh yeah train right like so you know that the sky is a color and and it's green um and that's r correct right well no so i mean yeah <laughs> this is um the, the more i look at it the more frustrated i get and and again this has no bearing on the gameplay of railroader but like the brake cylinder has no pipe going to it. There's no air supply. There needs to be air into there. Also, a locomotive this large would have two brake cylinders. Every steam locomotive I can think of has two. Even our small pissant narrow gauge stuff. Um, these, why are there two pipes that run over here and then, and then they're like, these are the air pipes, but then they just die at the, th th that one doesn't even go in all the way. That one just ends. <laughs> like it doesn't even go into the pilot like this one is theoretically like the brake pipe right but it doesn't come where the brake pipe is and the brake pipe is actually installed through the pilot where the freaking main frame member is coming in so that would never work and you wouldn't put it there because you have to have space for structural members like it you would have to have a big casting or, or something or weld mint or something i mean in this era probably a casting to tie in the frame to the the pilot beam like you'd have to have that and so you couldn't have that pipe there so i i all i hope is like i know heist is mean and he hates every train game and he tries to ruin train games right um at least some people say that <laughs> that's not what i want um that's not what i'm trying to do by saying this thing and and saying these things and pointing these things out on this model and i'm and i genuinely like i believe in the railroader team um i believe in what adam's doing um, and I believe that they're going to make this game better, and, and they have been. And the updates they've made have been awesome. Um, so I'm really not trying to be like, whoever modeled this is an idiot. Like, that's not what I'm trying to say. Um, not, not in the slightest. I just want you guys to look at these things with an engineering mindset and get a little bit more educated about Steam. Like, I hope you're looking at these things and not just taking them as, oh man, that's a pretty train. I hope you're looking at it and going, oh, that's a, well, that's a pretty train, but hang on, this doesn't make sense. You, you can't run a pipe through a solid block of steel that is the running board. You'd have to pocket it out and torch cut a hole or, or notch it or something in order for that pipe to run there. Also, you would never, you would never pipe, <laughs> you'd never pipe anything like that. Like what, what, what is this elbow that goes into the jacket that, uh, oh, why isn't that connected to the turret? This is the steam supply, presumably to the water pump. It just slurps in there and and there's no there's no place at the turret that would be a starting valve for the water pump that would then supply that and you wouldn't run it under maybe you'd run it under the jacket sometimes uh pipes are run under the jacket to connect to things like that happens sometimes that's fine but you would not do you would not have a t you would not you can't just slurp it through the running board and then you wouldn't run your sand pipe through it like that also if your sand pipe was that flat for that long you would never get sand out of it. Like, come on, if you ran into any issues with your sanding, there's a reason that they slope downwards most of the time. Also, you're running your sandpipe through the brake hanger. Like it, like, it physically can't be there because the, the brakes are in the way and it just runs right through it. That's not how that works. Um, so I, I hope you guys look at this and look at these things and start being more analytical about it and and learning some stuff about steam because I, I hope that you want to do that and that you're you're capable and and, and wanting to look at these things and, and learn some more because i mean the more you look at this uh, the more pain i get in <laughs> so, so i i have any like i am certain that there's a ton more things i've already just i mean i've probably been talking about this for probably the past 15 minutes um it's probably not been that long but i mean i feel like i've been on a diatribe here um and I and I could I could probably just look at this one engine for the next hour and just keep pointing out stuff like this that just analytically makes no sense. Uh, like as a real locomotive, um, none of this makes any sense, right? So, um, <laughs> but I don't need to bore you to death, uh, and I don't also need like the more I'm gonna talk about this, the more someone's gonna be like, "Oh, Heist is evil and he hates train games and and everything's wrong because because whatever." Um, which is not what I'm trying to say again. Um, I'm not sure how, how much more clear I can make it. Like I believe in Adam, I believe in railroader. I believe what they're doing. The game's super fun. The, the logistics side of it, I mean, is, is really good. I like this. I've never played a game like this 
that gets the the management and the feel of operating a, an entire railroad this good. I've never played anything like this that gets it this right. Um, but <laughs> don't look at the trains. <laughs> the, the, the trains. Uh, mm, yeah, the more you look at the the locomotives and cars, um, the the more of a aneurysm you want to have. So anyway, um, I hope you hope you understand and and you don't think i'm trying to be mean uh because i i genuinely love like most humans until they've proven that they're mean or awful or bad or something um and and i don't wish any ill will to anyone involved at railroad or anyone that works on it like i genuinely want this game to be the best cool railroad sim total railroad sim that it can be like i think that's that's what they're trying to do and and they do so much of it so well so i'm not trying to hate and say that they're awful or they're stupid like finding diagrams and finding drawings and references for steam engine stuff is downright impossible in some cases um and then as well at the same time they're incredibly complex things i wouldn't know any of this crap even after working on these engines for a couple years like i would not have known it until I had as much experience as I do. Um, I've been working on Steam for 10 years now, 10 years plus. Um, and so I've had the time and taken apart all those things, which is, um, it's old knowledge. Like we're almost kind of in a dark age in some way with Steam where um, we've forgotten a lot of what the industry knew back in the day. And there's some people who are, you know, the monks, the stewards who are writing it down and, and know these things and are educating about it. but. Um, they're few and far between, and I don't know near as much about Steam as they do. Um, so I, I want to pass the knowledge on, and I want to share what I can, which is why I do this YouTube. I want to teach you guys what I know, because I don't know everything, but I don't want it to be gatekept and withheld from you. I want to teach what I can with the means that I have. So, because uh, I want the best for Steam railroading. Like, I hope this continues, and... Um, you, you who are watching this, statistically, YouTube tells me that you're my age or younger, typically, um, or at least in my age bracket. Ooh, $232 for 98 fares. I don't know. That was such a different result. Hmm. The plot thickens. Anyway, um, yeah, if you're watching this, it's highly likely that you're young and, and you're going to get involved in, in railway preservation stuff, most likely, or at least I hope to think most likely and that you want to. Um, and so I want to try and teach you the best I can uh, and give you the best info and the stuff that I didn't have when I started that didn't exist when I started. Because um, I, I want I want this industry to continue. I want people to experience Steam because it's one of the coolest bloody things in all the the whole world like it's my favorite thing you know um all that or guitar but i mean it's hard to pick between those you know uh, <laughs> so uh so i hope you are interested and want to do this and like this stuff and and i hope that you're trying to learn this stuff um so that, that's where i'm coming from that's not it's not me being like oh my god these guys are idiots and i'm making my own train game and i'm making it so much better than they're making theirs that's not the thing like um well, the game that i'm helping make um uh, is going to do a very different thing than what this game does and it, this game is a ton of fun to play um but you know the, the, don't look at the choo choos too hard <laughs> or do and learn please like look at them and and trace the pipes and see what you can find out and does it make sense like look through it think about it does it make sense probably not um <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah i hope i hope you take some of that to heart and remember i i'm evil and i hate every train game and i uh i want everyone to fail because i'm mean so <laughs> somebody somebody actually did comment that someone actually said that about me um which uh you know whatever yeah can't win everybody over can't uh can't please everybody uh ever so uh that's the that's the joy of uh the the youtube i guess but anyway <laughs> well, we don't have a coal we don't have a coal hopper for this tower yet do we we still have 37 tons in it but um i only have the two i don't i don't have one that's set up to come get delivered here at bryson and i probably should do that although I, I, the business at bryson still it's not booming like i do not have a lot of stuff to do at bryson um and as we saw like i can't up the tier of anything at bryson yet soon Hopefully, hopefully I can soon, but uh, not yet. 
So, um, <laughs> but uh, we're, we're going to run out of coal sooner or later, either way, if we keep using it. Um, and God, this thing, this choo-choo, the, the Pacific of, of many broken pipes, um, <laughs> this choo-choo is, uh, uh, it's got a big tender and it holds a lot of coal and it seems pretty hungry. I mean, um, so it, it uses a lot. So we best be able to serve it the best we can, I guess. But anyway, let's get this thing uh, filled up and put away. And then we'll keep running the passenger train and, and we'll try and glean what information we can. <laughs> the triple hatch on the tender is kind of cool. That's a, that's a big mainline standard gauge cool, cool train thing that uh, my dumb little narrow gauge engines don't have or ever have had. What, 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 no, wait, no. <laughs> the more, the more you look, the more angry you get. Um, backup light, okay. It's piped into some conduit, that's great. And then the conduit turns and it goes, and then it just goes into the coal pile. No, <laughs> you would not do this. <laughs> you, you would never do that. <laughs> Where does it go? Who knows? Does it connect up here? Uh, probably not. Is there conduit off the dynamo? The dynamo has to supply electricity to things. Therefore, it needs conduit nearby the big end where the, the spinny electrically bits are. Um, and there's, there's nothing. Uh, but then they run, they run the electrical through the handrail to, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I mean, they run like locomotives have their electrical run through the handrails because they they are basically conduit. I mean, the handrails are made out of pipe, so that is somewhat reasonable. But, but where it comes out and how it comes out, um, no, that's not how that works. But but there would also have to be a supply from the dynamo. Like if it's going to be able to give electricity, it would. Anyway, <laughs> I said I was done, and then I just kept going. Uh, but I'm a bit of a broken record. You're aware. You watch the YouTube, presumably. So, <laughs> all right, let's get this thing in the shop. Okay, across the table, it's a big choo-choo. Like it, when you look at it from afar, it, like it, it is pretty. Like it's a nice looking engine, the Alesco and the Feedwater and like the whole, like that look, that just looks like big, powerful, kick-ass choo-choo train. Uh, and I like it. Just, uh, just don't look closer than that. <laughs> eh, lordy. Okay. Well, that's all. That's all there. Um, we'll keep playing with the passenger train. I mean, it's the last thing left to do today, all other than stuffing the four in the shop too, I guess. Um, which it. Oh, oh my God! It needs coal. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna service this thing, get it put away, finish the day out. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. We'll, we'll meet you back when we. Uh, get the passenger train in the next spot to see what it does. So be right back. All right, passenger train. Oh, I put the fusee in the wrong place. I put the fusee where it would actually stop. Right. Well, we're gonna bypass Wilmot. <laughs> we'll, we'll check back in when we get to Dillsboro because everything else is put away. We're just waiting on the, uh, the passenger train. Uh, oh, and then I have to finish the wood, right? Because we've delivered all of the stuff. But either we're going to, just, you know, like, deal with it once a day. Why was there smoke there? That was strange. Um, either we're going to deal with it once a day, right? Um, oh, those are already empty. <clears throat> okay, right. So, like, to, to do the log and the pulpwood thing, we have to load and unload every day, right? And so... The log job is not just bring the stuff down and cool. You have to go put it back. You have to put your toys back. Um, and and we've delivered everything, but we haven't actually... Well, I mean, we're working on delivering everything. All the cars have been spotted. <laughs> and soon enough, uh, they'll get finished up. But yeah, that's a, that's a whole job on the railroad here. So uh, we'll get that, uh, get that sorted. Um, I guess, yeah, I, I put all the engines away and now I need to advanced time and run those cars so i guess i'm gonna do that 
So, uh, yeah, I'll, we'll see you when the, uh, when the train gets, uh, when the pastor train gets to Dillsborough. Past Coey, yes, right. <laughs> and put that, uh, the fusey right there in advance of the station so it, uh, so we can test, so we can see the thing, the lid. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to do a more scientific test because I honest to God don't know if the double bonus is being a thing or not. It feels like the train's making a lot of money, so there's that. But anyway, it's got um, <laughs> it's got four miles of railroad. It's got four and a half miles of railroad to run. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna wait the for the AI to do that. And rather than rambling on, um, uh, yeah, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> All right, our passenger train has made it to Dillsborough. That's how you say it, right? Not Dillsboro something like that it's fine um come on give me give me control there we are good whistle i like that whistle <laughs> and uh now we kick kicking and then uh, <laughs> then we see how that goes see what happens Looks like our other train is in a place where it, oh, it's almost made it to the switch. Come on, you. Come on. That is a good lot. Passenger train is not going to fly past the station. It's not going to go too far. I promise. I swear. Well, welcome to having ADHD and playing railroader. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. We'll uh, we'll, we'll just gonna teleport back real quick. Passenger train didn't go too far. No, it didn't. Look, it's perfect. We planned that. That's how that works. <laughs> All right. What? What is it gonna do? It's not a full train, but well, it's pretty full. So it'll probably. I mean, it'll make some good money. But uh, just how much? We're gonna have to. I'm, I'm gonna have to be scientific at the end of this episode. Like, we're gonna have to fill the train only to Dillsboro from Silva do it with the engine on and with with the engine off and we'll have to do it twice and see what uh, what the money sitch is what happens yeah we need to we need to find that out all right our other buddy he's running through the paperboard um, do we want to hold him at Silva or do we want to hold the passenger train at Silva? 248 bucks for 82 fares. That's a crap ton of money. That's awesome for, for as few fares as it was. That's uh, that's killer. So, hmm. I don't know. I don't, we're we're, we're going to be scientific, I promise. We're going to do it at the end. So. bang into these cars real quick and yeah I think I think we'll hold the passenger train here because the AI has got more places to be so we'll do that um, and then uh, we'll see you ah, bang it's fine uh, we'll, we'll see you back when we uh, when we're ready to do some scientific testing at the end of the day here uh, it's that break that one the other observation car all right operations uh, no oh, I've clicked on the car Choo choo. Uh, re road. Reverse. Full beans. Full beans. And line the switch that way so that the freight will do its thing and it will not cause an issue for us. Yeah. Because uh, cause the, the freight's got to go and he's got to drop stuff at Barker's and he's got to go up to Connolly and. It's the log job. <clears throat> it's scooting though. A choo choo is scooting. I mean, it, it did. Uh, we did brown the choo-choo um i had se several derailments while off camera because <laughs> i was half listening to a podcast um and half <laughs> playing the game um and uh yeah uh, uh brown brown the tra the tender is almost dead i don't know if the the tender being dead does anything um god we should probably we should probably repair some of these cars at the shop 
I don't know if it matters, if condition matters for cars you own, because I don't know what, like, if you get money from doing the pulpwood stuff. Do you? I don't, I don't get messages saying that I've made a bunch of money um, when I deliver the stuff. It obviously helps the industry's function and has importance. <laughs> I got the Doppler effect. What, what are you, what are you doing? You said you were stopped for a switch line against you. What are you doing? You're so confused. Also, oh my god, that is... That is not how string works. Uh, we'll, we'll ignore that. It's fine. Nope, still trying. Still trying it. <laughs> just gonna, just gonna keep, keep figuring it out. God, you're, you've got the throttle open too far and you're, you're wasting water. And the water gets used at a rate faster than the big boy uses it. That's a precious commodity. Well, here's the freight. That was quick. I guess things scoot fast when you're brown. So, anyway, yeah. Uh, when I'm ready to be scientific about these things, uh, I shall see you again. So, uh, be be right there. Oh. I love the, the, the grade crossing whistle so good. Even if it doesn't get it on time, even even how however it tries, you ch you tried, you tried your best. You're through the crossing. Stop whistling. Oh, like, come on, friends. <laughs> Anyways, we'll see you shortly. Well, it's actually the dawn of a new day now. Um, had some meetings I had to take care of, and this game is thankfully quite easy to play in the background. Uh, I say on YouTube as you're probably playing this game in the background uh, watching what I'm saying. I've procked the day over, was doing stuff, uh, and I have loaded my passenger train with only people to Dillsboro. Um, and I tried, and I tried procking hours and, and advancing the time by hours and hours, and it seems that the way that passengers spawn uh, has changed. <laughs> Probably and probably for good reason, like probably a, a good good thing. But um, we've got 15, 21, 19, 24, 20, 19. So we're gonna we're gonna just see how many fares it is. We're gonna do uh, Ella to Dillsboro. We're gonna do uh, Silva to Dillsboro and see what money it gets and then on the way back we'll try and load about the same amount of people so that it's the same distance um, so that we can be scientific ish uh, <laughs> uh in in the way that we're doing this so yeah and uh god yeah we're, we're gonna we're gonna have to wait forever to get all of the people to load but anyways while we're doing that, um, we do have other trains doing things um, on this new day. The three is put away for the day. Um, the two is working on doing its um, wood stuff. Yeah, so it's got to go back to. Uh, it's got to go to some of the, these loads. It's uh, it's already done the uh, the woodier sawmill piece of things. Yeah, the logs are unloading, so it's it's got to do its loads, and it'll do its unloads later. We're using the two for it because it's the compressing the capacity. It's at one. Oh my God, it's gonna, it's gonna need. It's gonna need <laughs> water and everything. That's fine. But we'll bring it back, um, and then we gotta get, keep going with everything else while we get on the passenger train. Uh, we've got the five over in Ella that has reached end of track, and despite me putting a few Z down, um, oh, it did say it earlier, I guess. It did tell me that it stopped, uh, and I didn't catch it. You'll note that I rewrote cars in there, which, uh, yeah, uh, some of the engines have become brown. It's fine. 
we're trying to uh, decrease that safety rating. You know, just like this. Bang. Ouch. Um, I have realized that I don't think the uh, health of the car, if it's a car you own, I don't think it matters. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to change anything on that front uh, in terms of what you, what you experience. So let's uh, so just brand them. Just nail it all and it'll be great. That seems good. Why am I hearing a bell? Ah, the passenger train's arriving. That's why. Okay. Can I blow the whistle, bud? Dinging your bell a bunch. There you go. That's, that's a pretty solid crossing approach. So that, that's solid. Congrats. It's well done. And watch it. It's uh, sneaking up on the fusee. Sneaking. Still sneaking. Can't tell if it wants to accelerate more or apply more brake. There we are. You done? You done? No, you gave it a bunch of throttle right at the last second. There you go. Now he says we're done. But that's gonna be uh, what lets our passengers off, and uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see the start of that whole thing. And then he. Two's gonna come stop at the depot so it can go get more water and fuel and things. Uh, and this engine, uh, our not so new but not so not new engine that is now very brown, it's um, it's had a time. <laughs> this, this poor engine. Uh, it's been violently abused by a bird. Hundred thirty-eight dollars for a hundred eighteen fares. Come on, come on, you. Hundred thirty-eight for a hundred eighteen. Okay, so a little bit more than a dollar per fare, basically. So we need to figure that out. What in here? Yeah, I guess we should pull. The, we should remove the car from the alphabet. Um, so that the eastbound, when we ever get to it, um, and what it's doing can continue on. Yeah, f five trains, um, five trains is is basic. I mean, it's really more than you can handle as one person at that point. And it's not that you can't handle it, but like if you want to handle things easily and have things be timely and make things be fast that's, that, that's kind of what I'm all about like, that's kind of how that works um, so you, you kind of have to have two people really at least to make the rest of the, the, the game work um, if you've got five trains um, but, I mean, you, you can, like, just deal and just do the thing, and it's fine, and it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> but, like, to, to really make it work and be efficient and timely, you, you need a couple people, um, for sure, in this space with, with this many trains. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really going to have to get somebody else to come play with me. So. Come on. Come on, please. <laughs> <clears throat> Or, uh, or anyone else, I mean, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. Maybe, uh, maybe we do viewers come play on the ES and DT. Could be fun. Do you want to play on the ES and DT? Let me know in the comments. So, yeah. <laughs> we have to, have to sort all that stuff out, as it were. But, um, yeah, I mean, trying to do the best we can. And yeah, some, some of the choo-choo's became brown. It's fine. And that is spotted. Pow. 
we dug out the other car for the uh, eastbound that will eventually come. Good deal with it. <laughs> but we need to get the passenger train ready for the, the second part of the scientific quote-unquote test. Um, which I don't know. I don't know how we're gonna do it um, if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't make things change in proc throughout the day. So I guess we'll see. But Silva, it's the same distance. Copy to coupled. Uh, 100, 108 was it? 118 and 138. And everyone is already loaded for Silva, and it is uh, 8, 13, 18, 21, 27. It's a quarter of the amount of fares. That's, uh, that's not ideal. And see, if, if I go and I go to locations and I say, wait an hour, I don't know if it changes it. Yeah, something changed there. Because it used to, like, spawn a ton of people that wanted to go places if you procced the the time uh, so that you could actually do anything. But, uh, yeah, n now it's fewer people to Ella. Like, it, it's, it seems like it just randomly changes it now. It doesn't add any scene. Well, now there's somebody for Ella. And this time, nothing. So... Yeah, there we go. Some. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why, uh, why or how those things changed, but yeah, we we're gonna do our best to make it as scientific as we can. By goodness, the uh, the later I let it go in the day, the darker <laughs> things get, because it's apparently fall um, here in. Uh, <laughs> Railroad land, and uh, yeah, it uh, it gets dark fast. So we should probably do the rest of our switching, and we'll see the results of our experiment shortly. So I'm gonna do that. See you back in a bit. Night shift in this game is awful. <laughs> it's very dark. Hard to see what's going on, and lighting in this game is uh, not ideal for doing stuff at uh, night. So. <laughs> but we're almost done with the second day of filming this episode. And uh, the train is still there. Uh, it looks like it's it's about loaded as much as the uh, the other one was. 118 fares or whatever it was. $138. Uh, we will scientifically test it. Um, I would assume that the same difference, or same distance covered in different uh, directions would still yield the same result. I don't know for sure, but uh, it is nighttime in the game, <laughs> which means you can't see anything. I can barely see anything. Uh, you guys probably can't see anything in, uh, in the YouTube space, so sorry about that. I mean, it's, I mean, it's ridiculously dark on my monitor, and it's, it's not even 8 p.m. in the game, so it's very much, uh, winter time, apparently. <laughs> <clears throat> but I can see enough. Do the thing. That'd be nice if they had a, a brightness slider or something, because this is a little much, but that's okay. I've been hard enough on Adam and team this episode and uh, based on what I can tell uh, they've only uh, changed things that I liked rather than things that I don't like so I should probably stop uh, talking about things that I like in this game so that they don't uh, break more stuff <laughs> only joking um, but yeah like the passenger loading being the way it is now. Um, so well, we showed that in a previous episode, and oh, well, now it's well, now it's changed to not be that way. And okay, well, that's uh, that's a little little silly, little interesting at least. So, whatever, it's fine. Those cars, uh, <laughs> they they made it. Um, 
yeah, our safety rating better go down because uh, we've been browning some stuff. We've been having a bad time off camera here. Just saying, like it's it's been it's been a problem. <laughs> we've derailed a bunch of crap, um, and I've been switching like a bad kid. So uh, you know, the SNDT is living up to its name, but. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this train rolling onto its de destination. This one, this is the eastbound. Here we're at night, bang. Um, and we're gonna get it to interchange to make some money. Uh, the passenger train, right next to it. Actually, we, we can tell the passenger train to go right now. Let's just, let's just do that. Reverse. Go. Disappear. Goodbye. Go go do that hoodoo that you shall do so well. Uh, and we'll fly along the black uh, <laughs> lightless place. Uh, and then we will put a fusy burning uh, <laughs> switch so that the passenger train doesn't do anything too stupid. And then this guy's got his brake on. That's great. Go. Full speed, full beans. Go do the thing. Also, that's depressing for a headlight. Like, a good headlight. They actually, they actually cast a lot of distance. It's kind of surprising. Um, people joke about how bad headlights are on steam trains, and that's just really not the case, actually. In actual, you know, they're actually pretty good. Um, but you know, um, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, the the rest of the railroad's pretty quiet. The two did the wood job, and it's parked and the three did its stuff and it's parked there and the fours made it to Bryson and thank god it did because it was very br it was very brown <laughs> it uh, it had some unfortunate times on the way uh, but yeah these th these two trains the eastbound and the passenger train are the last ones to finish up for the day so I'm gonna get these figured out and see kind of what the deal the deal is. That's the wrong engine. I turned the yep, this one to manual and it didn't select it, because the code is frustrating. Yeah, instead of changing stuff that I uh that <laughs> that I like and I think is cool, like uh the way the passengers spawn and make it so that they don't spawn all the time. Um <laughs> Why don't you change some of the things that are intrinsically frustrating about the game? Ah, they'll get there. They will get there. I believe in Adam and his team. And I will continue to say that until I no longer believe them. So. I'm going to kick these cars. Kapow. It doesn't matter what separation you have. It just matters that... Uh, the car is going in and that be that. <laughs> God, they look so stupid with the, the yellow and the, and the light as dark as they are. Okay. Gonna make it. Gonna make it. Cool. Brakes on. Brakes on the engine now. Throw the switch so that the uh, freight can keep going. It looks like the freight's lined through. See it in just a minute. He's actually gonna whistle for the the stuff. God, this is cool. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Jason, so he's gonna get that. But. Okay. Oh my God. We. Uh, wow. Oh, well, we. I think we proved it. This test. I had to burn a day to do that, but. The, uh, the first one was 118 fares between Silva and Dils Dilsborough. 118 fares, $138. And this one was 117 fares and $137. So us having kicked the uh, OBS again didn't do anything. But we're, uh, we're set up to run it you know, more gooder, which is cool. Um, and <laughs> the reality of it is, uh, is I'm going to use that to run a second passenger train at some point. Well, we're going to have a eastbound, westbound passenger train, passenger service like that. Um, in the very near future here, when we buy yet another locomotive, presumably, <laughs> But uh, we need to uh, we need to keep making money to make that happen. I mean, we we can take out more loan. We've uh, we got sixty four thousand dollars out and eighty thousand is our maximum. But we we have five grand, so we're gonna pay the five grand. So fifty nine. We actually have twenty one thousand uh, dollars that we could do if we wanted to buy more train. Oh my god, I'm tempted. I'm tempted to buy more train. You know I me, mean, we like train, uh, even if we, well, we, we don't really like the trains in this game, um, but you know, they're, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 21 grand, we could buy another Pacific, but we wanna change it. We could buy the Decapod, Strasburg 90, Great Western 90, good engine, but a 280, the same flavor, uh, yeah. Empty. <laughs> oh my god, all these engines, all of the engines in this game. Oh my word. Oh, the, that's not engine in tender. Okay. I thought that the, the weight empty was the engine in tender for a brief second, and I thought that uh, m my dumb little choo choos at the Rared Museum were heavier. But they're not. It's fine. These are just engine and weights, uh, which, which 91 is still heavier than most of them <laughs> yeah uh, the k35 um she's heavier than that she's not heavier than the pacific or the decapod uh, or these things but yeah she's close but she's a big mainline engine for the narrow gauge uh, so anyway yeah we'll, we'll, we'll consider getting another engine soon enough where you stopped for a few Z. Oh, I left a few Z there when I was doing something else. Look, no light, light. There you go. Pow. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that that, uh, that engine's gonna wander into the interchange and finish its day with the interchange. And um, this is the first time I've done two days of Railroader uh, during a video. Like I've usually tried to make it one day and be a thing, but I wanted to do the science uh, with the passenger cars and everything, and, and so we didn't run them across the uh, the, the network here. Um, so we didn't, you know, um, and that was great and, and fun, but uh, the passenger train didn't run the whole way, uh, and the, the freight, I mean, we did all the freight we could, um, so I still don't think there's any upgrades we could make or change at our, any of our locations, I don't think we could bump anybody up. Yeah, looks like we can't. Um, we're already tier three at the paperboard. Good for us. Um, so I don't like. I don't think there's anything more that we could be doing right now with with what we have. We just gotta be good and make sure we're giving at all of these um, industries everything they need. I guess, and uh, hope that the rare doesn't go out of business, which I don't think it will. Ooh, Stenzel, we can go to tier three. We're going tier three with Stenzel, for sure. Pow. Um. <laughs> Consumes 11 cars a logs a day. We don't have 11 cars a logs. We're gonna have to buy some more cars. 
goodness. And then Ella Farm Supply, yeah. Tier three, we can do tier three. Cool. Tier two, oh, we, oh, we've had a day, so we can now, earlier in the episode I said I couldn't up the stuff in Bryson, but now I can, now that I've served it. So we're gonna make everybody tier two, and now they're gonna need more cars. So next time we're gonna be doing a little more, doing a little something more, and yeah, we're, uh, we're gonna keep the railroad running. So it's, uh, it's fun. The the true logistic sim of this game is so good. Pow! Whistle. There you go. <laughs> and uh, you know I could send this engine back to the shop to be repaired, but uh, it's run by AI, so it actually hasn't really been browned too bad, other than the one little spicy hook I had, and it's got a lot of fuel and water. Um, big choo choo. And as much as I hated all the piping stuff uh, that we talked about on it earlier, uh, operationally for the game, it's good. And, and again, like, I, I really tremendously hope that you guys don't think I'm trying to be mean or that I devalue uh, Adam and his team. Like, this game is so, this game is awesome. This game is so much fun. I, I don't play games that I don't like. I really don't. Uh, which is why you haven't seen Roads in London in a minute. Oopsie, that was my outside voice. Um, but, you know, um, I want to play stuff that I like, that I enjoy filming and having a time with. Uh, and the, the railroad sim of this game is... is good. Is it perfect? No. Yeah, there's still more to go, and that's fine. It, but the, the model accuracy doesn't matter, but... Um, I hope, you, I hope you guys really did take to heart what I said and, and look at these engines and and try and understand what, what and why they are. Because uh, it's going to make you better for working on real Steam. So I, I hope you pay attention to that stuff and and ask for that stuff. And uh, hopefully, hopefully it meant something to you. Um, if it didn't, then it didn't, and, and if you don't care, then you don't care, that's great, that's fine. You don't have to get passionate and get involved in this space. That, like, it's not for everybody. Uh, but but I hope that if you want to, and you want wanted to be a part of Steam Railroading anything, or you want to, and that you haven't, or you are a part of Steam Railroading, I hope all of you listened and looked at that and went, wow, that's uh, that's not right. And, and, and that's not trying to be mean to the modelers. Like, that's not like, oh my god, you did this so wrong. Because, yeah, railroad locomotives and uh, <laughs> the things that go into making a 3D model, I mean, it's uh, significantly challenging. I get it. That's uh, that's uh, that's okay. Um, but I want to teach where I can. And I don't know everything, and I'm not perfect, and I'm not smart in many ways but uh i i hope you guys resonated with that so anyways guys thank you so much for watching we'll catch y'all next time uh, uh in rare order so anyways take it easy see y'all next time